Um, so hello everyone uh, and welcome. My name is Katie Andrews. I am one of the climate change coordinators uh, within the climate change and energy team at the Highland Council. Uh, so today we will be uh, talking about the relaunch of Energy Sparks uh, within Highland schools. So Energy Sparks um, and Highland Council have been working together since 2019 uh, to offer Highland schools uh, an online energy analysis toolkit and energy education program. Um, so this is operated through a smart meter. However, you don't need to have smart meters installed in the school to take part. Uh, so we have currently 13 schools um, online with our energy sparks and uh, one of our schools, uh, Inverness High, has already seen a 30% reduction in their energy consumption since they started with Energy Sparks. So I'm going to hand over to Paula um, from Energy Sparks and she is going to tell us a little bit more about the toolkit. Over to you, Paula. Hi, thanks, Katie. That's um, that's a fantastic uh, results from, from Inverness High. So we're looking forward to seeing that in, in a lot more Highland schools. Um, so if we can move through the, the slideshow. Then, so Energy Sparks um, has been a pilot. It was a pilot in 2017, um, with about 11 schools in the Bath area, and since then we've spread to um, over 150 schools um, throughout the whole of the UK. And I think our northernmost schools are the Highlands, and we've got schools in Cornwall as well, and and some in Wales too. So we're really, really spreading out, um, and we're getting great results from all of our schools. It's very much a pupil-led platform um, we hope to encourage pupils to take action on the the climate emergency and carry that from schools um, into the wider school community but let's just talk a little bit about how it works in schools so if we can have the next slide for a lot of schools what it comes down to is cost and um, a 30 percent saving for inverness high would definitely translate into lots of savings for the schools now if um if that's what your school is is a priority for your school then we do have lots of case studies that demonstrate how working with energy sparks has saved schools thousands in electricity cost or identifying um, inefficient appliances has saved them hundreds of pounds as well. So when you log in or when you go to the Energy Sparks website, you'll be able to find some case studies that give you a little bit more information about that. Moving on. <clears throat> So one of the most effective um, uses of energy sparks is to increase energy literacy uh, among pupils. And I, even as an adult, I find that sometimes it's quite hard to understand what energy use actually is. So one of the things that we do, um, it's right at the very, very top of the, the pupil dashboard, is to kind of put it into perspective what the school's energy use is. So, for example, we'll compare your school's energy use to how many hours of video games you can play. And for, for one of our local schools, one week of electricity would give you six months of non-stop video games. Um, we'll put it into carbon equivalents as well, so you can understand the impact in the environment. So again, one week of uh, gas use for a school is about the same as driving a petrol car 960 kilometres. My favourite um, comparisons, however, on the next slide. And this really brings home the impact of um, energy use in schools and its impact on the environment. So, for example, um, a, a school that's quite energy efficient in, in Bath, their electricity consumption for one year would take, would put enough carbon dioxide into the environment that it would take 13 trees living 40 years to, to absorb that from the environment. However, it would just take one wind turbine um, three weeks to produce that much um, produce that much electricity in a carbon neutral way. So you can really help children to understand and help staff to understand too the impact that their energy consumption does have on the world around them. Next slide, please. So we, um, like I said, are pupil based and we've grouped our activities into different roles that pupils can take. We've got analyst, change maker, communicator and detective and we have certain um, activities um, under these headings for, for pupils to participate in. Next slide. Now what we've done to um, enable schools to, to get started with Energy Sparks is to put several of these activities together in a programme or Get Energised programme and this one is focused on the Highland schools 
Um, Katie, do you just want to explain how that ties in with the Green Impact Programme? Yes, of course. So the Green Impact uh, Toolkit has uh, just been launched within schools and this programme is an accredited scheme uh, which e or each school can follow an online toolkit and it's aimed at trying to improve sustainability amongst peoples and amongst um, people within society. And we have uh, collaborated with Green Impact and you will be able to see in the Green Impact Toolkit that there is Energy Spark specific activities and we have also linked them in um, to this Get Energised um, Activity Toolkit as well. So it ties in um, through the little green numbers um, throughout the um, uh, Get Energised Activity Pack. Uh, so look out for the little green numbers and um, it's a double whammy because you'll be able to uh, gain some green impact points as well as improving your energy efficiency within schools. Great, okay, thanks. Um, so we've got a 10 step um, Get Energised programme and it basically focuses on um, getting some getting some children, getting your energy team. And then the first thing we want them to do is look at the data, which is developing some really great mathematical skills because all of a sudden you, you get even young children and Energy Sparks works with children from key stage one all the way up to, to key stage five. But you can get really young children understanding the, the school's energy use by just looking at these charts. And so we'll present the charts to them with some bite side questions. If you are not an Energy Spark school, we'll give you charts that you can look at. But obviously, if you are an Energy Spark school, you get these questions and you're presented with your very own data as well. So you can answer those questions about what's happening in your school. Now, um, one of the best things about Energy Sparks is that we have we get the the energy consumption data from your energy provider and we get that within a couple of days so if your pupils are making action or taking action on your energy consumption this week they'll be able to look at your data again next week and see exactly the impact they've made which which is very um empowering for them to to see that action um, in, in the data. So we will have several analyse activities that you'll look at your own school's data. Then we'll have some investigative activities as well, uh, running spot checks around the school, seeing where computers and lights and whiteboards are being left on or analysing equipment and, and seeing which equipment's inefficient. If we could have the next slide, just moving through this and um, 10 activities you can we suggest you do them in order, but you can do several in one week or do one a week. It's up to you. Um, so we've got the investigative activities and we've got the making a change. So what we've suggested for this Get Energised campaign is that you once you've looked at your energy, uh, once you've looked at your electricity data, then you do some spot checks about whether things are being left on. And then you label some equipment or some lights for the ones that can be turned off. So what we have found that um, if lights are being left on, children can take that responsibility to turn them off. Obviously, in schools, there's equipment that you don't want turned on. So we have suggested a, a bit of a traffic light system. Green if children can turn them off. Orange if they need to ask a teacher and red for things that never, never, ever get switched off. And uh, that seems to work quite well in some of our schools. Obviously, your pupils might have a different idea on how to run that. But that's uh, the beauty of Energy Sparks, that you can definitely put your own impact, put your own uh, slant on things. Um, once you've made that change, we want you to talk to your wider school community. So share the word in an assembly or put something in the news later so everybody's aware of what you're doing. Then you're going to, to share the load a little bit, recruit more energy monitors to be the ones switching off the lights and reminding the teachers in the class. Then you're going to carry out another spot check and analyse the data just so you can see the big impact that your pupils have made. If we um, move on to the next slide. So really, most of our energy projects, so we want you to be looking at, at a, an ongoing series of, of events, really. So you look at the data, you might analyse the situation, you just go, you make a change, you tell everyone, and then you look at the data again, and it goes around and around and around, and you can see what you're doing, the difference it's made, where um, the data is still showing lots of energy use, and, um, and then you can take action on that again. And again, this is um, something that even young children can do with adult support. So it's it's applicable for everyone in the school. The next slide. Good. It's just an example of some of our analytical activities and how it shows 
uh, what your school looks like if you're an Energy Spark school. We've got the next one. And then some detective activities as well. So we support children, uh, we support pupils to do energy audits of school kitchens and labs and um, carry out temperature investigations as well in the next one. Good, we provide all the resources that you could need. Um, next one. And then communication activities, um, lots of creative activities there, which is quite nice. And then the communicating activities also involve talking to the members of your school staff that pupils don't often work with. So we might um, suggest to pupils that they talk to the kitchen staff about how they'd save energy, or you talk to the, the site manager about how they'd save energy too. And again, we provide questionnaires and, and ideas for those conversations to get the people started. Next slide. Oh, next one. There we go. Um, we also provide resources for teachers as well. So that comes under our Explorer heading. And um, we've developed some learning, some lesson plans that teachers can use with small groups of pupils um, in an energy club or also as part of your curriculum. So we have lessons um, learning a little bit more about where energy comes from, its impact on the environment, how your energy use um, affects the planet. We also have activities about transportation and diet and how those affect your carbon footprint, your school's carbon footprint too. We're developing more resources about renewables because renewables is obviously one of the, the ways that we can um, have a big impact on our reducing our carbon footprint. And again, just like the other activities um, for teachers, we have learning objectives, differentiation, um, the main resources are all there as well. All your worksheets are there. And then if it was something that you wanted to carry on through the term, then we have cross curricular links of suggestions that you can use in, in different lessons as well. The next slide. We also have staff led activities, so some schools decide not to do energy sparks with their pupils and um, it's purely staff involvement. And so we will also give a lot of support for staff on writing policies or how they can discuss it in staff or governor meetings. We have the next slide. And then for, um, for the site managers and caretakers, we make suggested activities on things that they can do with regards to building fabric change or heating system configuration. We give them all the information that they could possibly need on that and also one of the new features that we're bringing to energy sparks next week is um, a chance to make a target so your school can set a target it's up to you we'd recommend five percent target you'd make a target and then when you take action on any of these or any of the pupil activities your data will show that and it will calculate how much you've gone towards your target so you've got the data there to you know, really inspire your staff and to show the impact that your actions are having. And if we have the next one, for every school, we give you a little bit of a scorecard. Um, it's uh, a bit of a an overview of your energy use and the actions that you're taking. And um, we will, you can click on all of those and you can find out lots of detailed information about more actions you can take and um, possibly why, why your school's energy use might be a bit higher than you're expecting, really. Uh, we also have an energy analyst that can work with you and do an online advice call if that's something you're also interested in. And one of the other things that we do to help schools is um, we provide energy saving opportunities. So we look at your school's data, we suggest the actions that you can take that would make the biggest difference and um, we'll suggest the savings and also if there's a cost or a payback. So for example, for this school, reducing their electricity base load, which is the amount of electricity that just stays on all the time would save the school almost 5,000 pound a year and it wouldn't actually cost them anything to do that, um, turning down thermostats might cost schools hundreds or thousands of pounds. We might also suggest that solar panels might be a good idea or um, replacing boilers. And obviously there would be a cost for that, but we would let you know what the payback is as well and provide information about that. And I think that's that. Thank you so much, Paula. Um, that's uh, been really helpful just to get a, a nice, 
overview of the toolkit and I think it's just important to reiterate that this is a fantastic opportunity for Highland schools uh, to get involved so please do sign your schools up it's uh, more important than ever with our um, targets that are coming out from Scottish Government and as Glasgow prepares to host COP26 we want um, everyone to be involved in that engagement and empowerment and uh, feel like they're making a difference within their school and um, so I do encourage you to sign up for Energy Sparks and you can do this by contacting myself um, so I'm uh, Catherine.Andrews at highland.gov.uk you can find my email in the bio for this video um, and also it will be included in the email uh, that comes with this email uh, that comes with this video as well uh, so I just want to thank everyone for uh, listening to this video and I hope we've inspired you to take part in Energy Sparks uh, I don't know if Paula you have any final things to say yeah, just that it's, it's brilliant to have so many Scottish schools signed up and um, it is a free programme for state schools, so there is no cost to it. Um, very easy to set up because we're the ones that contact your energy provider for you and um, we are just at the end of an email um, which Katie will share with you and we can provide lots of support and also we do provide online training as and when is required. So we'll, we'll probably arrange a couple of dates for Highland schools coming up and, and Katie will let you know about them. So I look Perfect. forward to working with you all. Perfect. Thank you so much, Paula. Take care. Thanks, Casey.